Euphemistic language impairs our communication, hence our lives. This one's relationshipy. Apologies to the hermits. Oh, that's all right. English is loaded with such euphemism that we fail to say what we mean. Other languages probably are too, so turn on translated subtitles if that's the case. A lot of this seems to arise from prudishness, taboo, refusal to refer to some things clearly. I hear a lot of people sleeping with someone, and I'm like, that's nice, good to have a nap, I hope they didn't snore too much. It's arguably the best thing you can do in a bed, and it's less stinky than fucking. Oh, you meant fucking. Kind of contextually the opposite. If the realm of what we're describing is being in bed, then sleeping is the least active thing you can do without dying, and fucking is pretty active, if I might say so myself. This is because we know we shouldn't say fucking, and even having sex with abstracts the act from a verb to a possessed noun. Three words cowering from the reference and tripping the context over. Having sex with is only a century and a bit old. Sex in the other context is much older, as is the verb fuck. Not that fuck is perfect itself. I think the idea that one person fucks another person is ugly because it ought to be a cooperative act. It's also used in patriarchal ways, referring specifically to penile penetration. Dale Spender suggested we reclaim engulfing as much as penetrating, and that sounds good. Let's get on to engulf hub. With fuck being a swearful word, it can be linked to violence and aggression in awkward ways that conflate it with rape, because the perspective this originates from doesn't bother thinking of consent. Think of fuck you. Is it, in a sense, a threat of rape? It's certainly not fucking as a good time. So that's something that nearly everyone does, many aspire to, that has a massive hold over our culture, and is in many people's top 16 pastimes. But we don't really have a proper means of communicating. We ought to arrive at a better means of addressing it than sleeping together. The thing is not. I know it's clearly a me thing that I take an extra moment to translate these phrases from what the person said to what the person meant, and once sleeping together is in the dictionary to mean fucking, or just once enough people use it, that's literally what it means. But it undermines the act of actually sleeping together. It originates from being afraid to refer to fucking, and it's a direct lie that suggests the very lack of fucking. Why are we still pussyfooting around communication like Victoria? then ever wondered if people were in a relationship. Ultimately, I can tell you they probably are, because any two people who can recognize each other and are aware of that have a relationship. Really, in parasocial contexts, it needn't even be mutual, and I feel a very deep parasocial connection to you. Don't abuse that power. What you really meant was the word relationship in a different sense, which I'm going to have to describe as a capital R. This is in itself a hazy thing we define amongst ourselves, but maybe we're asking whether they're established partners or if they're sleeping together or sleeping together. Maybe I've conflated having a relationship with being in one, but those distinctions feel so timid and occur in the small words around the big ones. The question comes down to whether they have a kind of commitment contract between them, something culture used to codify as marriage. And that's kind of none of your business, but you still asked. Marriage is an obsolete institution of stapling people together, so it'll cast a load when they split up, soaked in the evil of religion and homophobia bound to the norms of monogamy, except in places where it's bound to worse norms. Even monogamy etymologically refers to marriage. If monogamy stands in contrast to polyamory, then it should be monoamory, monamory. But we're so used to defining things by the standards of past structures that oppress us, and we do these monoamorous commitments that resemble the promises of marriage. And then we're in a relationship. Except we were already in a relationship, we've just moved to the more formalized version, which I distinguished with the capital R. It's just so hard to say a capital R out loud. Relation relationship. 
This should really have a distinct word. I don't intend to be excruciating with this. It's language that's excruciating. Think how much easier this would be if it were a different word. How much confusion could be avoided. Maybe if we didn't bother recognizing the horrible ceremony of marriage, then each capital R relationship could be seen as its own marriage. One you're committed to, but can leave if it's unfair. Relationship, meaning a sexual or romantic relationship, whatever romance is. Can't even be traced back a century. I posit that it arose from having to actually refer to relationships that aren't married, that prior culture was so scared, euphemistic, and marriage-oriented that the only relationships fully recognized were marriages. Back then it was all courting. Something a man does to a woman, thought of as a prelude to marriage. You can't find a relationship in the Oscar Wilde trial. There's a reference to immoral relations. Certain conservative standpoints will refer to any sexual relationship outside of marriage as immoral. To get to a capital R relationship probably involves love. People love each other, but some are in love with each other, and if that's an actual distinct category, then it really needs a clearer explanation, and again, a distinct word, as expressions to love and be in love are way too similar. We do have these words in the pretentious Greek ways, or whatever the online queer discourse has come up with this week, but they don't supplant the love versus in love thing, so we end up with a lot of confusion. All three examples I've given are places where the language doesn't sufficiently cover what it's meaning to express, and they are instincts that are absolutely fundamental to life, or a construct that's become fundamental due to its association with the others. We're expected to be able to do and navigate each of these things, but we can't even describe them. In every case, the words already mean one thing, but are being used euphemistically to mean a different, intimate thing, if you know what I mean. Do you? evasively. I'd prefer we just refer to the intimate thing, because then it wouldn't get confused with our lesson understanding of the first thing. I'm just trying to make sense to work toward better communication, which would result in more comfort and less confusion. I know it's futile that I won't change how people say stuff, that my fixed idea of what something means can be phrased as a kind of conservatism itself, but clearly my motive is against the euphemistic conservatism of language that impairs under Understanding. It's just language, a code, doing its best with what it has to describe something we might argue cannot be represented in code. But we can still work on the code when it's all we've got. It's gonna have fumbles, but when those fumbles arise from the prudishness of historic culture, we should build anew.